All right, let's see. One, two, one, two. Let's go over here. We have audio. I hope I'm recording the right one. Yeah. All right. Let me see. But then again, I start talking really loud and I project. So that's the problem I'm having with this. I eventually stop projecting and then that happens. Okay. Let's see if this doesn't freeze it. All right. All right, let's do this. Welcome back, guys. Uh, here we are for another vlog. Welcome to Clown Vapes channel. How are you? Hopefully you've had a good week. We were on the Stooges last week. How awesome was that? I hope you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully they'll have us again. You know, I'm excited about that prospect. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to do some news and advocacy. I have, uh, you know, what I've been vaping. Not in that order, apparently, because I do it. What I've been vaping, news and advocacy. And then we're going to do a beer, which I think I haven't done yet, but I might be wrong. And if I'm repeating myself on the beer, I am sorry. I'm kind of running out, running low, so... It is one of those things I need to hit up my uh, my store and get some more beer. All righty. So let's jump into it. Let's do some what I've been vaping. All right, guys. So what I've been vaping. Yeah. Um, got some oldies, but goodies. I'm kind of like getting to that weird point where I'm just repeating myself a little bit. And then I got some stuff where I'm not. You know, it's kind of a toss up. I'm trying to bring some things like some older things back into circulation because I have this gear and I want to vape it because I love it and I have it and I own it and I want to use it. And yeah, I'm excited. I had a nap earlier, so I'm doing really good right now. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are enjoying this and finding this comical at minimum. All right. So up first, I got the double barrel 2.1. Yeah, 2.1. I have the three sitting right there staring at me, and that review is coming up soon. Then uh, next, I have Orange Bubbly. Orange Bubbly Bubbly by Danish. I have that in here. Always a good juice. I like it. Uh, I have the Scion tank on top of here. I won it on uh, Nick Bissett's Daily Vape TV. If you guys haven't seen his videos, and I know you have, but if you haven't, check them out. Dude does some good videos. Fresh Bill Friday is one of my favorite of his video segments. Or videos that he does. But yeah, I won a Patreon giveaway and this was sent to me. And you know what? I, I am liking it. I I am not a sub -ohm guy. I barely like sub -ohm tanks. I barely like RTAs. And there's like one minor gurgly issue. But other than that, I'm really liking it. It's a nice little uh, flavor guy. Rocking it with the uh, 0.47 co ohm coil on there at 101 watts. What else can I ask for? Just saying, for Canthal, it tastes pretty good. Yeah, you see that? It makes like a weird gurgly sound right before it starts up. It's really weird. I don't know. And it has like um, too much juice going through the middle. I, I don't know. It's like leaking in its own way, I guess. Uh, next, I have, yeah, Dull Dime. Dull Dime, number 40. This till I run out of psycho Criller, which won't be too long from now, because I've been this has been steadily just staying, staying. But uh yeah. What else can I say? It's a dull dime, man. Uh hits hard. Oh my, it hits hard. clouds for days with that twisted messes not gonna lie this this thing the twisted messes is something that i never really bothered with a whole lot just, i had it because i wanted the twisted messes line as my collection like i'm still missing the uh, tm30 and i'm trying to find one that that falls within my price range because i feel an atomizer that old shouldn't cost 65 dollars. i think they still cost so it's something that i want to get but right now i'm not within my means of getting it so you know, and speaking of uh, hits hard, yeah, that's that 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 fresh new new. If you guys don't know, got the ardent, stole a little bit of James's style, so I got that DHD moss drip tip, and you know the LE Dreamer. I I tried tried it on the red one, didn't like it on the Clown Dreamer. I I I left the uh, Reckoning, which review for this week, spoilers, kind of thing. Well, yeah, either way. 
review later this week is for that Reckoning RDA. Hopefully you guys like it. And there's a beeping sound. I just got a new uh, little camera guy. Yeah, traveling. Travel vlogs. I'm so excited. And um, so Ardent, LA Dreamer, silver pin on the on the on the doohickey here on the uh, button. So and in that I have uh, where'd you go? I have a bunch of things on my desk at the moment. I have Paramount. Don't remember what the company is. My wife kind of won this on a on a Christmas karaoke thing they were doing with the Stu Crew, and since she's not a vapor, guess who benefited? So, thank you. I love you. Thank you. She watches my videos from time to time, not always. I'm seriously digging the ardent. I'm liking it, and I will get that review out to you guys as soon as I can. I'm I'm actually. I have things on my calendar now that I have them set up for when I'm what week I'm doing what. And uh, actually, uh, like I've discussed this with my wife and I'm trying to like still going over in my head. But I would like your guys' input. Would you guys like for me to do one more review video a week or just keep it vlog review and that's it for the week? Um, I, I just don't know. I'm still trying to figure out my 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 style here. All right. So lastly, I have the Orion pod kit you know most people don't acknowledge it as a pod kit it is a very direct lung pod uh i will say mess with the e-scribe once you get that going you can switch this to like a different style of what wattages or voltages or whatever it hits and i personally think it does a lot better that way in that i have a uh, cream cereal cream and yeah, really, really good flavor, really good stuff. I'm liking it. And see, for me, like I, I've mentioned it before, I, I was not a mouth-to-lung smoker. I was a direct lung smoker. So to me, that works perfectly. Don't get me wrong. Like, where, where'd where you go? I actually had it here a second ago before I started filming. The, the Zero. Love this guy. It's a really good pod. I lost my blue one, so if you ever go back to my review, it's the mint blue. The mint, I think it was mint blue or some mint, mint green or something. I don't know what color it was, but I had that one. I lost it. I had to buy another one. That's how much I liked it. I had to get another one. See what I mean? It's it's a different thing. Personally, I'm a direct lung everything, so yeah. All right, so. Let's move into some news and advocacy, and I will apologize ahead of time before I even start the segment. I am sorry I get ranty and angry, but even reading this article earlier today was just horrible. So, all right, brace yourselves. All right, guys, news and advocacy. As you all know, and as I've said before, Join whatever group you want to. I don't care. Just join somebody that, you know, you trust that, you know, is doing what they're supposed to be doing within the community and even then do what's best for yourself. Keep up to date with all your news. Keep up to date with. Um, OK, this thing. I don't know how to shut it off. Keep up to news. Keep up to date with everything that's going on around you. I mean, here in Texas, the smaller towns have been pushing 21 and older. I. I'm not affected by this, but at the same time, I personally do not agree. I I do believe that if you're considered an adult at 18, no matter what the circumstances, you're considered an adult at 18, which means you can make your own choices and your own decisions. Now, if they change the legal age of everything across the board to 21, then that's something different or even 20. You know, I mean, I feel like maybe getting out of your teens, but even then. The thing is, like, at least personally, I feel that if they move it to 21, okay, yeah, 21. What's to say they won't move it to 25 next? You know, that's the next step. Maybe 30. They don't think you're a, a smart enough person to make decisions before the age of 30. Maybe you're not a smart enough person to make decisions before the age of 35. 40? 50? Where does it stop? Where does the buck stop? It sounds ridiculous, but it can happen. You know? I mean... 
what 25 years ago or so you could buy alcohol and cigarettes at the age of 18 then they decided that 18 year olds weren't smart enough to consume alcohol so they moved it to 21 did that stop underage drinking no it just made it more a challenge to underage at least that's how i view it being that i i feel i'm at i'm at the age of 32 but i feel that i'm still close enough to that mindset i have always been somewhat of a rebellious person somebody that doesn't like being told what to do and with that being, you know, a part of who I am, I feel that that mindset, it really sinks in in those teen years. Like you really just want to fight everything. I have a 13 year old that like she doesn't like live with me, but she comes stay with me because, you know, she's my kid. But um, yeah, I'm fixing this. It's annoying me. Uh, and, you know, since I don't see her constantly, I don't really deal with the teenager thing a whole lot. But when, you know, they come for their stay here with both of my kids come over with the 13 year old and the nine year old who's right behind her. He is just right behind her and he's doing the whole little sibling thing where he copies everything his older sibling does. They both give me this like weird attitude and they have to have like an attitude adjustment of like, hey, I get it. Knock it off. (laughs) It just becomes really simple like that. And they just snap out of it. It's nice. They are good kids, but damn, are they they acting their age? It gets a little annoying and frustrating sometimes. All right, so here's uh, the article I was going to read before I just tangent any further than I already have. All right, so if you guys aren't aware, there is a represent like congresswoman from like Connecticut, just. You know, doing what Dems do. And I really hate that we break everything into party lines, but that's just how our country works. That's the Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives. And I fall somewhere in the middle of all that. And that's why I can't classify myself as either. So that's where I am. If you guys wanted to know, if you haven't noticed by now at this point, in watching my vlogs. So Delore, she says, uh, don't get fooled by Jewel. And... So here it is. Uh, U.S. Rep. U.S. Rep. Uh, Rosa Delore is ready to take on big tobacco, and she is recruiting an army of seventh and eighth graders to help. Which that just I I don't even get what that means, but that's just in the writing. Let me see. Oh look here, look uh, on the article I'm looking at. There's like a little ballot thingy here on the side, and I might take a screenshot of this and post it like right 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 here or something like in one of these free spaces so you guys can see what i mean just in case they switch it but there it's a true vote and they're like should new haven pass a tobacco 21 law and they actually have it in one of the decision like one of the choices on there is yes make it 25 what did i just say what did i just say oh my god this was very intentional, unintentional. This was something that I had, I did not pay attention to when I was reading this earlier. All right. So Congresswoman stopped by Solantano Biotech Health and Medical Magnet School uh, on Canner Street Tuesday to talk about the dangers of vaping to young people and announced that she will introduce a Youth Vaping Prevention Act. Delure said the bill aims to close federal tax loopholes on e-cigarettes and stop companies from making or from marketing flavors to young people to attract new generation of nicotine addicts. The bill also would toughen up age and identity verification for internet sales. Scroll to the bottom the story for the summary of the bill and provisions. On Tuesday, Delora asked the group and Solentano middle schoolers about what kinds of vape flavors they knew about. The students shouted out what could have easily passed for flavors of their favorite Jolly Ranchers or now later candies. Cotton candy, one student said. Pineapple, another added. I don't remember a cotton candied flavor Jolly Rancher or now and later, but maybe I'm out of the loop on candy. I don't really eat candy a whole lot. I'm more of a chocolate person. Like, you give me some co- chocolate covered peanuts, M&M's, you're my best friend ever. Just putting that out there. If you ever meet me, give me a handful of M&M's. We'll talk for days. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. I got to keep this somewhat entertaining for myself because this is really just already pissing me off just reading that part again. 
Okay, so it's the whole adults like flavors too. I'm sorry, but so do we. I I am an adult and I like flavors. I just said I like candy. I like M&Ms. I like chocolate covered peanuts. You know who else likes those? Children. Trust me, my daughter made us chocolate covered peanuts for Christmas. They did not survive. Just say. That is what is called a marketing tool, Delord told the students. And see, and that's the problem. The flavors aren't a marketing tool. They're a way to help us quit smoking. And if you want to tell us that, that yeah, it is part of the marketing, but, you know, a, a VG flavored, a VG PG flavored e liquid would not go over well. Tobacco flavors. They really don't, I, I personally, I've tried like one tobacco and I tried making one tobacco and they were both terrible. I haven't found, a, uh, well, the one I tried wasn't terrible. It just wasn't my thing. I didn't care for it. It was one of those. Okay, sure. That's the thing. But I mean, you saw the array of things I have. I have like Fruit Loop cereal stuff. I have, what is this? Like peaches and cream or something like that. Or peach cobbler. This is a Cruller donut. Lemon pound cake, orange soda. Uh, this one's like a fruit medley. Let's see, kiwi dragonberry. Uh, this one's supposed to be. This is a. This is a Skittles, mouthful of Skittles. Coffee. This one is pineapple, coconut. Strawberry Lava Flow from Naked 100. You know, yeah, it's it's part of what we're what it is. It's not a marketing tool. She wants to like sh like reword everything to fit her agenda. And this is I already I'm getting pissy. So just bear with me. All right. That's what makes makes it fun. It says, hey, this is a great cotton candy gummy bears or whatever. It's directly marketing tool to all of you. And see, that's the thing. Nobody's marketing the children. And that's another one that just like sets me off is that when they talk about youth and children, a lot of the time they're also talking about 18 year olds, which are in most places legal to smoke and vape. 19 year olds that are in most places legal to smoke and vape and even including 20 year olds and that's one of those weird things of I just feel that no, you are full of shit. All right, as part of a push for her bill, Delaro is also kicking off an anti-vaping campaign in Connecticut to help the next generation of future non-smokers fight big tobacco called "Don't Get Fooled," and it's spelled F-U-U-L-D, kind of like how the jewel is spelled G-A-U-U-L. She is in enlisting tech-savvy youngsters like Brian. Ramirez into her army and there's a picture of the little boy he looks like he could be my son the Salentano eighth grade said he doesn't vape but his younger nephew who is about 10 does which at that point what do you question where the fuck are your parents where are your parents that they're letting you do this shit at that age I am sorry but I started smoking at 13 so don't get me wrong I know what happens but 10 really 10 Brian has tried to get him to stop. He said he believes that the nephew is usually swipes pods from his father. Mm, okay, so yeah, no parental guidance, no parental talks. Here's the thing. Kids are going to do what kids do. But at the same time, as a parent, it is your job to guide them on somewhat of a path. I personally come from a really messed up neighborhood. I come from gangs, I come from drugs and all sorts of shit like that because that's where we lived and it just was a really bad area to grow up in. I mean, most people call that the ghetto, but guess what? My parents were stern in their own way. They were nurturing in their own way and they taught me to stay the fuck away from that stuff, to try to be better, try to get out of that. I mean... I remember years ago, and you guys are going to know my age at this point, even though I already said what age I am, but they did uh, MTV Cribs with P.O.D., if you guys remember that band, and if you remember that show, and they were like showing off their house and that and this and that, and they're like, yeah, once we out of the ghetto, we gone, we ain't never going back. That was something that I looked at, and I was like, you know what, 
and I'm old enough and I can get a house or an apartment or what have you, I'm going to get myself and my family out of the ghetto because we don't fucking deserve this shit. We deserve better. Guess what? We moved to fucking Texas and we got the fuck out of the ghetto. But, you know, it is one of those things of you as a parent have to teach your children what's around them in the world. You can't protect them from everything, but you at least got to like teach them how to react to things, how to be around certain things. It's very simple like that. All right. Brian says he wants to help Delaro on her quest to get kids to stop vaping. He is willing to commit his eighth grade uh, capstone project to cause to the cause before he heads off to high school. The topic is tobacco and addiction already, he says. Delaro said said she's going to going old school with new school vibe by reviving a uh, success of awareness campaign like kick butts that didn't work that helped the generation of people understand the risk and dangers of smoking. She told the students and she wants to empower them to use the social media and talent for technology to reach their peers for big tobacco for uh, before big tobacco does. Companies like Juul say they have voluntarily pulled back their social media campaign, stopped distributing certain flavor pods to retail stores and strengthened age verification on their site, but the damage might have already been done. The number of teens vaping has skyrocketed so much that in the U.S. the Surgeon General... Okay, the Surgeon General is a fucking prick. If you guys want to know a little bit more about him, I'll put a link down below for uh, Grim's Green's video, uh, 510 Report, on that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Uh, let me see where was I. Surgeon General has issued a public health advisory. Meanwhile, Altria Group Incorporated Company of Philip Morris, USA, recently negotiated a purchase of 35% of Juul for $12.8 billion. Ted, Ted Wong, Juul Labs spokesperson, said that the company shares a common goal with federal health regulations and lawmakers preventing young people from using nicotine. Yes, let's do that. Let's prevent them from using nicotine. But at the same time, don't make us an ultimate evil. Because here's the thing. In this whole let's protect the children thing, you're punishing adults who are trying to quit smoking that have tried patches, that have tried gum, that have tried Chantix, that have tried cold turkey and have failed numerous amounts of time. I am a person that quit smoking twice cold turkey. Guess what? I came back. I came back to smoking twice. And you know what? It got worse every fucking time. So, and this is something that I started at 12 milligram. Oh no, not 12 milligram. Started at 24 milligrams. Yes. 2012 products weren't as good when it comes to like hardware and this and that you could, there's all that. Yeah. But I started in 2012 at 24 milligrams. Then I dropped to 18. Then I was down to 12. Then I was down to 9 and I met my wife. That was three years ago. I am down to a 3 and I have been on that for over a year and a half now. And I am working my way down to a 0. I am considering that 0. I still enjoy nicotine and I like having nicotine around. But at the same time, you know what? I was able to slowly, gradually reduce my habit do what I want to do and be a happy person for it all right we are committed to preventing youth dual dual products he said in a statement we cannot fulfill our mission and provide the world's 1 billion adult smokers with a true alternative to combustible cigarettes if the youth uses continue use continues inabated oh un unabated as we said before, our intent was never to have youth use jewel products. We have taken dramatic action to contribute in solving this problem, which is why we implemented the Jewel Labs action plan to address underage use of jewel products. He said the company stopped distributing certain flavored jewel pods to retail stores November 17th, strengthened the age verification process on their website, eliminating its Facebook and Instagram accounts. 
He said the company also is working on new technology to further limit youth access to the use access and use. We are committed to working with lawmakers and the Surgeon General, the FDA, State Attorney General, local municipalities, and community organizations as a transplant to responsible parent partner in efforts, Wong said. All right, so yeah, that's all good and fucking dandy. You know, I mean, here's the thing. As uh, if you have a company and you have uh, you do have a responsibility over age verification, which is something that all vape companies that I personally use and follow. Yeah, my camera keeps fucking going off. It's pissing me off at this point. I don't even know how to use this thing, so I am very sorry. Very sorry. I turned it on and now I can't turn it off. All right. So, you know, yeah, you are responsible over age verification. You are responsible over who's using your products. I mean, that's one of those things of like behind the scenes. I know some things that have gone on with certain companies and, you know, some of them have had actually to like message customers and be like, hey, dude, I need an ID because I have never had an order from you and you're ordering in a mass volume. I want to know what's up and that kind of thing happens, you know, that, that happens. So, you know, it's one of those things of what else can you do to prevent this from happening? So, all right. Uh, I don't want to get any further ranty. I want to enjoy the rest of the vlog. I'm going to jump into some beer and we are going to enjoy this beer and do some pairings, which I kind of have an idea of what I'm going to pair it with. Yeah, so stay tuned. Beer time. All right, guys, welcome to some beer. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna get this puppy going. Uh, for some reason, I'm filling up a tank because I needed to fill this guy up a bit ago, and I am really crappy at prep apparently. So yeah, <laughs> just kidding you. But I am filling this tank up because I wanna I wanna vape this juice in this tank. Try it out. I'm gonna get my old faithful down here. Cause yeah, I think I haven't done this one on camera before. This uh, I know we did it for uh, when I was doing vape beer and tacos, and I might have done the other version of this a while back. But yeah, we're gonna jump into some. If I could spin it the right way, there you go. Triple triple. Mar Marzu, Marzu, Marzu. I don't know. I don't remember how to pronounce that. Nor am I really trying uh, really hard to do in it. It is a Belgian ale, a Belgian style ale. Let's see. It says traditional, twelve percent by volume, eleven point two fluid ounces. It says triple. Triple is a high fermented Abbey beer brewed. In accordance with the Benedictine tradition of community of Marceau Abbey, the Abbey the beer is refermented in the bottle during a two-month aging period. Marceau triples should ideally be served at a temperature of 42 to 50 Fahrenheit or 6 to 10 Celsius. Contains barley malt. And then it has a couple of, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, warnings and such. This is brewed. Let's see. Brewed and bottled by Duval Mor Mort Mortgat Mort Mortgat Mortgat. Pours Belgian imported by Duval Morgats. So yeah, it's straight out of Belgium. All right, let's let's pop this guy open. Oh, I already love that smell. I already love that smell. All right, let's see. Let here comes the pour. Nice and clear. Got a nice uh, kind of reddish look to it. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. I think that was like the best pour I've ever done. But yeah, look at that hue. It's got like almost like a, I don't know. It's got like an orangey kind of look to it. I know like Belgians aren't very citrusy, but wow, that, that is amazing. It's amazing. All right, let's. I actually cleaned out my nostrils before doing this video this time. So hopefully it helps. It's making me salivate. Like it makes me want a steak. You know what I mean? Like you ever have like a beer that when you smell it, you're like, I want a steak. It's kind of like, okay, I drank Jack Cokes for the longest time for years and years to where uh, anytime I have like a Coke, I want some whiskey in it. And I just feel like that's the only way I should be drinking it. But this is kind of how I'm feeling about this, like a nice juicy steak with that like little piece of like garlic butter on top, just melting away. That's all it's making me think of. Like, I can't really think of anything else but a nice steak. Alrighty. So let's go in for the drink since the, the head is uh, going away. Oh, that's heaven. Not going to lie, the last couple of we weeks have been kind of disappointing in beer. Other than Choco Vesa. So this is making up for it quite a bit. Alright, so I'm a happy camper. All right. Hmm. All right. So first, we're going with Naul. As always, that that has become a, a, my one of my big beer juices. We're gonna do this. Oh, that. Oh. Oh. Okay, I've died and gone in heaven. I really have. You guys ever watch Beer Fest and when they try the greatest beer in all the world? That's kind of how I'm feeling right now. This is beautiful. So beautiful, man. Uh, I know I'm being silly as all hell and I think it's because I slept earlier. I'm all awake and perky and stuff and it's kind of annoying. So I apologize if I'm getting a little bit weird. All right, so next I'm going to go with that... Uh, what is it? Orange bubbly from Danish. It's within the same wheelhouse. It's an orange e-liquid. So I feel it shouldn't be too far off, but we will see. All right, let's give this a try. See, that's good. It's not as good because the... Uh, the Naul gave it this like nice uh, sweetness to it. it. It balanced out some fruitiness into the the e liquid and all that kind of thing. So it's not the worst. It's not the worst thing I've ever had. It's not the greatest thing. It's just it's actually good. It's just you know kind of in the middle. All right, I'm gonna do one more because I'm running short on time, and I do apologize for cutting this kind of quick. But I, I seriously I. My nap really threw off my day for the most part, so it is what it is. All right, so next um, I having the plug and the uh, the was it Citadel? No, yes, yeah, it's Citadel. Yeah, I've been learning about all these like twenty millimeter flavor addies, and I have a couple of them confused in my head. I, I almost said Sentinel, but it's not the Sentinel. The Sentinel looks like something else. All right, so this I have that Dragonberry Kiwi. Let's do this. Wow, that, that's actually very interesting. Again, not the greatest thing I've ever had, but that was a really interesting flavor. It uh, brings up the hoppiness in a good way, and it adds a little bit of sweetness. It balances it out completely. Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. So I'll say Naul has become my go-to when it comes to anything non-stout or porter. But when it comes to, like, you know, more of the style of... Uh, like this, like a Belgian or an ale or a Hefeweizen, um, I'm enjoying more Naul. Naul has become my, my all-time beer pairing juice. If you guys haven't hit them up, Gathering Vapor Lounge, pick yourself up some Naul, pick up a Warlocks mod, and yeah, just have a rip. All right, so 
uh, that was this week's vlog. Uh, we'll get more ranty and more and more ranty about this kind of stuff because, as always, advocacy is very, very important. And we need to stay on top of it and do what we need to do. All right, so let's uh, let's have a, a good day, a good week. Hopefully, everybody's doing good. And I'll catch you guys next time. And check us out, Vaping with the Omis, Mondays at 5 p.m. on James's channel, Frames Janklin Vapor. I have a link down below for him if you guys haven't checked him out yet. Uh, what else? Wolf Bite Radio Show on Vape Radio, my, uh, Saturdays at noon, Sundays at 9 p.m. And we do have the replays if you guys want to catch any of our older episodes on SoundCloud slash wolf bite i think i have a link for it down below if i don't i'm very sorry and i will post one for this week for sure all right so as always guys mix on vape on All right, so that was like the worst one ever. Where is it? There we go. There we go. Let's go with that. Can't do the meat pot if I'm doing that one because it's the same fucking juice. Okay, we'll go with this guy.